Hello World Outreach Revival Center. It is good to be with you again today on this Friday. We'll see who shows up to hear my humble words this morning. It is good to have you guys. Amen. So we'll see there somebody. Uh, Mary Gilmore, I recognize your face on that little icon. Hello, sweetie. Good to have you today. Hello, my sister Rose and Pam. Amen. Good to have you guys. Amen. And we're going to get started here in just a couple of minutes. It's been a, a crazy day. I was on live this morning. If you go on Facebook um, with Alan Hickman uh, at, on um, Rising Above the Chaos. Hello, Miss Shannon. Rising Above the Chaos is on with Resurrection. They, uh, Brother Alan, this was their last one, and and Brother Alan asked me to join him, and uh, and, and uh, we were able to be there this morning. But it's good to have all you guys. Uh, Elizabeth Irving and Shauna and Sharon McKinney. You today, we're just going to wait a couple of minutes and see who else might pop on here. And uh, anyway, it is good to have you. I'm getting excited. I hope you are for the service coming Sunday. Uh, we are going to be having a live service uh, in the parking lot. So it's going to be awesome. Um, can't wait to, to get everything laid out. Eric and Lisa, good to have you guys with us. And uh, Jim Reif, good to have you, my brother-in-law. We'll see who else pops on here for just a moment. But uh, it's kind of a crazy day. I woke up, I uh, went to bed last night. Yesterday was one of them. You ever have one of those days where it feels like every day during the week is a Monday? Hello, my daughter Mandy and Billy. Good to have you guys. Every day this week has felt like a Monday and uh, been a very busy, extreme week. So I went to bed somewhat exhausted last night and woke up this morning literally with two words on my spirit, one for the chaos of rising above the chaos and one for you guys. So it was pretty cool. It was like God was talking to my spirit in the middle of the night and I just woke up and just had to write down what he said. So it's pretty neat. Um, so it's good to have you guys with us. Um, I'm going to look for something while people are popping in real quick. And uh, amen. Trying to find a little. Pray for me because my phone makes me uh, really having a hard time. Uh, uh, it, it is really uh, un, un, uh, a non-user friendly phone. Um, but I want to show this to you if I can find it. Well, I'm trying to find it. I can't find it. It's all right. Ruth Serpaz, good to have you, my sister. Uh, Jason, good to have you. Your wife is out in front of the building right now talking to my wife. So, um. If anyone noticed on Highway 11 on the property where we're having services, a big billboard sign that uh, was um, painted by Miss Shelley, and we uh, she put uh, Jacob's car on it. He's not here; he's working. But we got his car on it. We got Willen's pickup truck, my Jeep, and Jason's uh, his his uh, family van or whatever you want to call that thing. It's a big big van with all the kids can fit in it and uh, so she has a painted picture of them out there it's pretty cool but um, anyway we're excited about uh, Monday uh, come our Sunday coming up remember this please let people know 10 a.m. and uh, we're going to uh, uh, start service at 10 so it doesn't get too hot it's supposed to be in the 60s It'd be very comfortable. You're allowed to bring a uh, camera, I mean a camera, a, uh, a lawn chair and put it in front of your car. You're allowed to do that. We're going to keep social distancing uh, followed, but uh, we're going to give some space between the cars so you can sit out in the air and enjoy it. Ashton Marie, good to have you, girl. Uh, my granddaughter, um, Ash, if you want to fly in for church service Sunday, I'd love to have you. <laughs> I know it's not possible, but we miss you. 
Um, but we're going to uh, move forward on this thing. I'm waiting on a few others to join us. And uh, I've got an announcement that's going to be an important one. So I think uh, uh, some that aren't on here today will wish they were. But um, anyway, it's good to have you guys with us. Amen. I'm just waiting a couple of minutes, maybe one more minute, and we're going to get started. Love you guys. It is it's so good to, to talk to you. Uh, amen. Ash, I can't wait to see you as well. And I know she's speaking to all of us, so we're all missing each other right now pretty bad. We've had a week of prayer and fasting here at the church, and people have put their uh, pictures on the tables. And we're going to uh, keep the tables up. Uh, for another week, um, Monday through Thursday, you can come and pray with us. We'd love for you to. So it'll be pretty awesome. Amen. I'm uh, just waiting a couple of minutes to see who else might come online. Amen. God is so good. Let's pray. We're going to get started. Father, thank you for each one that has come today. I ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, for your spirit to speak to us, for your presence to overshadow us. For your love and your mercy to just overcome us, God. Lord, we need your presence, Lord, and we thank you for it, Father. We praise you. And Lord, let your spirit be on the word today. Let it be alive and speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let me get started here. Uh, first announcement, besides the Sunday morning service. Remember, tell everybody it's Sunday morning at 10 a.m., and as far as I'm concerned, if you want to stop by McDonald's and bring your breakfast and just park, uh, just come on. You can eat breakfast while we worship the Lord together, drink your coffee, and you know, dance in front of your car. I don't even care, but let's have a good time. Secondly, you want to write this date down, uh, a projected date of May the 17th, Sunday, May the 17th. We are planning to reopen the church. 17th. I don't know that we'll be able to go 100% capacity, but on that Sunday, we're going to make sure there's space for everybody that comes here. So well, even if we've got to do two services, but uh, just let you know, I'll let you know the schedule. But May the 17th is the projected date. Uh, several churches in the community are opening that day, and so are we. And so uh, we're going to continue the social distancing until this virus thing is, is past us. But uh, uh, that's going to be our, our target date. So get ready. I'm excited. So listen, this Sunday we're out in the street. Then Wednesday night we're here in the building. Next Sunday, if it all works out the way we're hoping, next Sunday we're back out in the parking, uh, the grass out there. And then the following Sunday, we'll be starting here at, at uh, the building. So uh, starting this week, guess what? On Sunday, we get to see everybody. And then next week, we get to do it again. And then the following week, we'll get to do it in church. So I'm excited about that. Get ready. And we'll be making several announcements. But I am so excited to have you to be with me today. So here's what I want to share with you. And we'll get moving. Uh, I know that um, sometimes I, I go through the word and I say, God, tell me what to say. And I'm searching for a word that will inspire us, that will strengthen us, that will encourage us or, or handle the battle of the moment that we're in. I told you earlier, I said this morning, Brother Merwin, Joseph, good to have you. I woke up this morning without any question at all, God had already put in my spirit what I was to do with resurrection life, with the uh, rising above the chaos, and then what I had for you, the church. And I, I had the, this portion of the scripture in my mind, I had to go back and read it to see what it said. And I got so excited when I read it because it just makes good sense and it's the timing of the Lord. So I want to read this to you. We're going to start with Isaiah. They're both in Isaiah chapter 60 and chapter 52. But this is the scripture that was in my, my spirit when I woke up. Just cool. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. And then, because I know if Jim's on here, he usually puts the scriptures, Isaiah 52, verse 1 and 2, and Isaiah 60, 1 and 3. So we'll get to that. 
But listen to this. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. From henceforth, from this time forward, there shall no more come into thee that are ungodly or unclean. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Now let me read this to you in the note. It says, Zion and Jerusalem, the holy city, are the subjects here. Listen, they, put, they are to put off their garments of sackcloth, the ashes, and all signs of slavery and captivity, and put on prosperity. I had no idea that's what I was going to read to you until I looked up the scripture he gave to me. Let me read it again. Zion and Jerusalem, the holy city, are the subjects here. They are to put off their garments of sackcloth and ashes and all signs of slavery and captivity and put on prosperity. Did you hear? Take off the bands about the neck. Take off every sign of slavery. Every sign of bondage, every sign of we're going through a hard time. He says, put on, awake, wake, put on your strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments. Put on the beautiful garments of praise and get ready. Get ready. You know, David, the Bible says in the Old Testament, he went through a time of fasting and prayer. Um, and I'm not going to go through the details of that, but he fasted and he prayed over a certain situation. And... At the end of that situation, he put his clothes back on, his, his royal clothes. He began to go eat and begin to put back peace in his life and joy in his life. And now I know we've been encouraging you to do that all along. But what I believe God is saying right now is the time. This is the day. I woke up with the scripture. Awake, awake. Shake it off. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments. From here forward, there shall no more come to thee of the unclean thing. Shake thyself from the dust. Get up. Put off the sackcloth. Sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Get ready. Get ready. This is the call of God right now, I believe, to the church. Get ready. I know Sage, I, don't, I haven't seen Sage on here, but Sage was telling me uh, yesterday, and this is, this is, you know, he wasn't even on this scripture. Sage, Pastor David, we got to go out and share the gospel. I'm just telling you, God is saying all this funk, all this, this uh, uh, negativity, all of this funk, Fear, all of this anxiety, all of this, uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, the, the end of time, the Antichrist, it, we're going to die, you know, you can't breathe, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know, people are dying, and I know these are real things, but there comes a time when we got to just say, it's time to shake it off and move forward, and I believe that is the word God is giving us for today, for you and I, because he, he knows who's going to listen. It's time to shake it off. Well, Pastor Dave, what if it's still here? It doesn't matter. When God says shake it off, guess what we do? We shake it off. We go forward. If you read your Bible, the children of Israel, they ended up right in front of a giant sea. And behind them, the enemy's coming. And what did God say to them? Get up, let's go forward. But we can't because the, the water is there. God said, I'm going to move the water. I honestly believe the Spirit of God is saying to the church, it's time to move forward, shake off, take off the, the heavy bands, take off the, the, the signs of slavery. You know, in that day, if, a, if a, a, uh, a country or a people were taken over by another people, they'd put bands around their neck uh, and they would be slaves. And he's saying, break those off. You're no longer slaves. Take off all that stuff that is, is, is uh, eating on you, the, all this we're in bondage and change your entire mindset. I honestly feel, and, and I'm just going to for a moment, this isn't scripture, I'm reading to you what scripture says, but I feel in my heart 
the children of Israel that were eating the Passover. And he says, eat it with your clothes on. Get ready for tomorrow you're leaving. So I really feel like we're right there at that edge. Get yourself ready for something on the horizon because we're about to move forward. So I'm telling you, I'm challenging you, church. Take off. Let me read it again and then we'll move forward. Chapter 52 Verse 1 and 2, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. From henceforth there shall no more come unto thee of the uncircumcised or the unclean. Shake yourself from the dust, arise, sit down, O Jerusalem, loose yourself from the bands of the neck, from the captivity that was on you. Ha! <laughs> I'm ready to loose myself from captivity. And I'm going to say this. A large portion of the captivity may be from men, but a large portion of it has been from fear. You know that, and I know that. And somewhere in here, we got to say, okay, God, I've rode this wave enough. Now we're ready for the sea to part. Okay, we're going to go then to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through 3. Another, these are two scriptures God gave me. And if you haven't seen this whole thing, get a chance to get on here at the beginning, please go back and watch this. Very powerful word for today. Isaiah 60, arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen up on thee. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And many of the ungodly shall come to the light and to the brightness of thy rising. I'm going to tell you something. God is saying, church, it's time to arise. It's time to shine. It's time to take off the sackcloth. It's time to take off the fear. It's time to lay it all down and say, even though darkness has come, God is going to show the light through his children. I feel this in my spirit this morning. As I, if, you, if you tuned in a little bit late, I went to bed last night, wore out, and woke up this morning, and God had already spoke to me. Before I woke up, he already spoke to me the word for resurrection, life at the rising above the chaos, and he gave me the word for this morning. And I didn't even know exactly the word except for the scriptures, and I started reading them. And they're all about breaking off the bondage, getting rising above it right now. This is the moment. This is the season. Right now, this is the time, church, that we got to say, okay, in my my life, I'm declaring and I'm believing this is moving out of our way and we're moving forward. I'm not going to carry the weight of fear. I'm not going to carry the weight of anxiety. I don't care what the devil does. I am walking as he's called me. He said, arise, shine, for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And then 52 says, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on the beautiful garments. Get yourself dressed, get yourself prepared. Kind of reminded me years ago, my mother told me, Sister Frances Taylor, and uh, some of you know her, some of you don't, but she's a precious woman of God, a worshiper. And she was one of the first ones in this whole area that came with the white dresses and the flags and the choreographed worship and dance. And my mother said, you know, one time I was talking to Francis, I think it was my mom said this, that Francis was getting ready to go to prayer meeting. She was getting ready to go pray. Listen to me. And when she got ready to go pray, she went in the room and she was putting on her makeup and fixing her hair and dressing up real nice. And someone said, why are you dressing so nice to go pray? She says, I'm going to see Jesus. I'm giving him my best. Now, I'm not telling you you have to go get dressed up to go to a prayer meeting. Some people on Sunday mornings are loving it because they're still in their pajamas. I'm okay with that. That's not what I'm referring to. What I'm saying is sometimes we've got to change our clothes. And the Bible's declaring today it's time to take off those garments that are garments of uh the results of a virus, the garments that are the results, the, the mindset, the attitude, that's the results of what we've gone through as a world and as a nation. And God is saying the line's drawn in the sand. Now it's time for the church to rise up. Arise, arise, he says. Put on the beautiful garments of praise. 
Get ready. Get ready. We go back and read this one last time. Chapter 52 and 60. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Tap yourself and say, the glory of the Lord has risen on me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shannon, I can agree with that. God showed me a celebration is coming is what she wrote down. Amen. That confirms this. Amen. For behind the darkness, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and thy glory shall be seen. Do you understand? The church is about to arise. And I said this a moment ago, when the children of Israel were in Egypt, and it was the last day, the last of the plague, the last plague was coming. He said, get prepared, have your clothes on, have your bags packed, because tomorrow we're leaving. I believe, it might not be tomorrow, I'm not trying to be foolish, but I believe with all my heart, God is saying, it's time. It's time. So I want to challenge you to get ready, read your Bible, prepare yourself, go to prayer and say, I'm shaking off everything that was on me. I'm not going to carry this, this weight or worry anymore. I'm not. I'm going forward. That's the word for today. For those that have just come on in the last few minutes, you might want to go back and watch the whole thing. Uh, it's not long, but it's a powerful word from God. Uh, and I am so glad you're here. Can we pray over this? And I want to make my announcement one more time. Father, be with each one of us, Lord, and those that are going to watch this from wherever they are, that they'll take Isaiah 60 and Isaiah 52 and realize the light has come. Your glory is shining on us. This is the moment to rise up and take off the sackcloth, take off the the shrouds of fear and anxiety and death and pain and say, God, we're stepping up to the place you've called us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let me say this to you for those that are just coming on. The, this Sunday, 10 a.m., everyone say 10 a.m. And I'm gonna ask everybody on here, text about five or six or 10 people as many as you can, say 10 a.m. Sunday morning, we're having, what's it called? Park and Pray? Drive-in Park and Praise. Drive in park and praise. We're meeting in the property between Anytime Fitness and Subway on Highway 11, right across from the old donut time. And we want to encourage you come. Hello, Maddie. Good to have you. You can bring your uh, breakfast. I don't care. It's good to have you guys with us. You can bring anything you uh just you can sit in your car or you can sit in front of your car on lawn chairs we're going to have families stay together those that have been together can stay together the rest of us have to do social distancing um, but we still get to see each other we can wave and we can sing together we can raise our hands right in the middle of picky and that's where we're going to be slap dab in the middle of picky and we're going to be praising jesus sunday morning at 10 a.m and I want to tell you something, every detail to put this together has literally just fallen in our laps. I got the last call this morning. Listen to this. This is so cool. The only thing I couldn't get, I was having a hard time with, was a, a, a and the stage that I had that I was getting was going to be a smaller one and low to the ground, but it was something. I got a call this morning and we got an 18-wheeler bringing a full flatbed for us now. Uh, for this week and next week. So it's pretty awesome, pretty awesome how God is uh, doing this and what God is doing. So we want you to get prepared for it and please contact some people and let them know, hey, we want to come on and uh, go out there and uh, park and get ready to worship the Lord. And uh, we're going to have a good time at 10 a.m. So please let people know. And then also remember this, the 17th is our target date of opening back up. So thank you for joining with us today. We love you and God bless you. Go take a good fresh shower and get some glory clothes on or something, spiritually speaking, and get ready to do 
and move forward. Shake off the darkness and say, God, the world is going to see the light of Christ rising in the church. And that is you, my friend. And that is me. We love you. Good to have each of you. Amen. Are we going to stream that service? Yes, we are going to keep it live stream as well. Um, and I'm going to use a different phone, but the same channel. And uh, we'll have it live streamed out there in the field. And I think Sarah's probably your man in the camera, so she'll be scanning throughout the, the cars as well as the stage. Get ready for a good time. Just might make revival happen, huh? That'd be awesome. We love you guys so much. Have a blessed, blessed day. And we will see you tomorrow around noon, I believe. God bless you. Have a good day.